week a couple of you talked about passion in your speeches and you kind of talked about the importance of finding it because of all of the wonder and meaning that it can bring to your life. And it's so true. I'll never forget when I found my passion. I was five years old and my mom heard about this new gymnastics facility that was opening up near her house and she liked the idea of me jumping on a trampoline way more than me jumping on her furniture. So she took me to a class. When I got there, the coach called my name and I grabbed onto her hand as I followed her out into the gym. And I'll never forget when I first stepped foot onto that floor and took my very first breath of chalky air. It was like this flame had suddenly been lit inside of me, telling me that I had just discovered the place that I belonged. From that day on, that flame guided me through every major decision I ever had to make in my life. It was that fire that got me out of bed and drove me to practice every day until 15 years later, 365 days ago from today to be exact. I was walking into my coach's office as a collegiate gymnast, wearing a letterman jacket that I'd earned, competing for a Division I university that I had a full scholarship to attend. All of this I took great pride in. But the thing is, ten minutes later, I walked out of my coach's office empty. When the woman who held my gymnastics career in the palm of her hands decided that she'd lost all faith in me. It was like the tsunami had suddenly come crashing through my life, knocking me off my feet, and washing away the path that I'd been paving since I was five years old. Adversity is something that we all face at some point in our lives. When we're struck with some sort of misfortune, that alters the ideas and plans we had in mind for our future. Even the most successful people have faced some sort of failure, disability, or been told no over and over again. Bill Gates' first business failed miserably. Albert Einstein couldn't speak until he was four years old. And Jay-Z was rejected by every single record label when he first started out in the industry. So why is it that despite these major setbacks, each one of these men not only managed to be successful, but managed to become some of the most influential people in history? Well, what science tells us is that it's not so much the way we go about making plans that will lead us to our desired successes and accomplishments, but rather how we handle the inevitable trials and tribulations we're going to face along our journey that ultimately determine our destination. Smooth sailing and avoidance of error. It's what we all hope for, for when we're climbing that mountain of success. But the thing is, that road sure as hell isn't smooth. And the extreme weather conditions that are going to come and go along the way can't be avoided. As human beings, we're far from invincible. Therefore, getting knocked down is an inevitable symptom of our imperfection. But the good news is, we can in fact attain the power and ability to not only overcome these misfortunes, but to achieve some of our greatest accomplishments soon after. This is because in order to have an understanding of exactly what it's going to take to achieve greatness, we must first understand exactly who we are and what our weaknesses are. And from the wise words of Albert Einstein, adversity introduces a man to himself. After I left my coach's office that day, I went into the locker room to clear out my locker to make room for the girl who would be coming in to replace me. And I remember thinking I needed to take one last look into the mirror that I used to look into every day before I went to practice. And where I once saw a gymnast with fire in her eyes that made her something special, I now just saw a girl. A girl with no fire, no passion, and nothing to love. And what scared me the most was that I knew very little about her. At that moment, I fell to my knees as I finally started to cry and thought to myself, how am I ever going to feel this way about anything ever again? And that was my weakness. I didn't know how to go through life without passion carrying me along the way. And suddenly, for the first time ever, I was being forced to do it. Once we become aware of our weaknesses, we can work hard to strengthen them. But making that decision to put forth that extra work requires something that very few people have in the face of adversity. And that's faith in the future. The belief that although you've been told no over and over again, someone's going to say yes. And although you're drowning in your own tears at the moment, you'll find something to smile about. 
And although your heart is broken and empty, there will come a time where it fills with love once more. As Steve Jobs once said, sometimes life is going to hit you in the head with a brick. Don't lose faith. After I spent my summer at home, away from everything that I had just lost, I faced my biggest fear. I returned to Ball State as just a regular student. And those first cold months were the hardest months of my life, when I spent every single night dreaming about putting my grips on one more time and jumping back on the piece of equipment that I never wanted to let go of in the first place. So one day I decided I'd do just that. I dug out my grips from under my bed, and I put them on, and I tried gymnastics one more time. But to my disappointment, nothing was the same. My grips had become too stiff to help me hold onto the bar, and my body had become too weak to send itself flying through the air like it used to. That was when I realized that all this time I'd been looking for happiness and passion and meaning in the wrong place. Because the place that I grew up in, I'd now grown out of. So, I left that chapter of my life behind me that day. As I changed my focus to meeting new people and trying new things, as I opened my heart up to new possibilities. Having the ability to see beyond what is right in front of you can be hard. But what you must remember is that this life is filled with endless opportunities for success. And in order to achieve them, you must first believe that they're out there. Because the problem isn't that they don't exist. The problem is that those successes lie in your future. And whatever greatness you happen to stumble upon tomorrow has everything to do with where you, look, where you start looking today. With faith, faith in the future and adversity provides us with an opportunity to grow. We fear what we do not know. So keep in mind that the fear that is present when embarking on a new journey ensures that you're entering an experience that is going to teach you things you know, never knew about yourself and the world around you. And embrace your doubts, as they are reminders that you're about to take on something greater than you could have ever imagined. You'll never fall in love with something you've never exposed yourself to. And you'll never be successful at something you've never tried. So stop hanging out in your little zone of comfort and believe that there's something farther out there for you. To be perfectly honest with you, I still get the chills when people talk about passion. It's like for a second I start to feel it again, and then I remember that it's just a memory. Because it's true that when that tsunami came, came crashing my life 365 days ago, that flame was washed away. Passion is no longer what gets me out of bed every day and gives meaning to my life. And that's okay. Because although that cold, dark wave knocked me off my feet, riding it led to my resilience. Which gave me the strength to rise up and the courage to go back and find that match made of faith that was once lit in the gym by a little girl at five years old. That faith is what now gets me out of bed every day, holds my chin up as I watch gymnastics meets from the stands. And reminds me to work hard every single day. Because that faith ultimately reminds me that although I can't see it or feel it just yet, passion is out there. Waiting to be sought by a girl holding match that's ready to be lit once more. Mm -hmm.